with the second course, one of our favorite, the main course. And today we'll be dealing with mashed potatoes with rib I bone in, but some other people call it tomahawk. It depends. If it has the extension of the bone, it's a tomahawk. If it doesn't have, we call it a ribeye. So today I'm gonna use it because it doesn't have a ribeye. The extension of the bone, I'm gonna call it a ribeye bone in. And it's a mashed potato. I already filled the potatoes, and the potatoes are peeled with the carrots peeled already and sliced up. I'm gonna make veggie carrots. The veggie carrots goes very well with sugar, but because of I'm avoiding natural, I'm avoiding artificial sugar. I'm gonna use natural sugar, or I'm gonna use honey as well. It goes all the same with some onions, garlic, salt, black pepper, and some olive oil, as I always do. And to kick off things. Faith is gonna be helping me again and wasting no time just throwing the potatoes in the boiling water. We have some boiling water at the back. And because we want the potatoes to be nice and mashed, we will boil them fast so that because they take a lot of time, uh, we don't wanna waste time and we wanna make it very fast. And then I have my pan that I switched on a couple of minutes earlier just to make it hot to clean up heat it. Uh, we'll put in the meat to seal. But Faith is gonna season the meat up with some salt and pepper. Please do that. Bring me the owners. Let me put this on the side. Okay. Salt and pepper. Yes. Okay. Oh, the only thing we need, and if you're gonna, if you're going to put anything else, it's going to be herbs. Right. For me, my favorite herb is thyme. Thyme or dill. I go with two. Dill goes very well with seafood. Thyme goes very well with red meat. Um, Shet, I'm going to ask you a question. Talk to me, talk to me. What is your favorite cuisine? <laughs> My favorite cuisine? Mm -hmm. I'll talk about fusion cuisine. Fusion cuisine is whereby you bring all those cuisines together, like from South America, from Africa, from all those corners of the world, mm -hmm. and then fuse them together okay. and make a dish. Well, that's interesting. Yes. That is very interesting. And uh, this has two advantages and two disadvantages. I'm just going to tell you one of each. The advantage about this, people get to enjoy different cuisines mm -hmm. or different flavors from different parts of the world, like what you're doing right now, because this is fusion cuisine. Mm -hmm. Veggie carrots is more of a European cuisine. Okay. This is more of a American cuisine because Americans love meat. Okay. Love meat. Even we do love meat, but our meat is near Machoma, under the regular wood charcoal, everything yes, else yes. that has flavor and suit and everything else. Yeah. But this one, making it from the pan, mm -hmm. is a little bit different. Okay. This is American. Okay. And then we'll serve it with mashed potato. Mashed potato is almost international. Yeah? It is. <laughs> it is international. So you you done with this? Yes. We we'll just place this over here. Okay. If your pan is not hissing, it's not ready. It should be hissing. If you want, you can put in some oil, but I opt not to put in oil, any oil because my pan is already hot and the meat has a lot of fat. So the fat is gonna render down. It's going to render down, and when it renders down. It's gonna give all the juices down and it's gonna give a lot it's going to give a lot of flavor and I'm gonna put my favorite hub. I will. Okay. And it's right over here. Dry thyme. Dry thyme, fresh thyme, it's all the same. I dry my thyme back home. Oh, that looks nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's gonna taste even better. Oh, okay. It's gonna taste even better. And now um, I want to know a little bit more about you. Yes. I'm, gonna ask, uh, I'm going to ask uh, <laughs> a very weird question that you want to ask. Yes. If you were to be an animal, what would you do? What would you want to do? Oh, I've never been asked that before. I've never been asked that before. That's the and why? When you choose your animal, mm -hmm. you say why you want to be like with that. Uh, I'd say fish. Fish. Why? Fish has a very beautiful life. I come. I think of that. I think of fish having a very interesting life because uh, if it doesn't matter if it's just gonna go down mm -hmm. in the water, mm -hmm. it doesn't be rent. <laughs> it doesn't have to be used. <laughs> it doesn't have to go to anybody to get food. Okay. Get its own food okay. around its area. If it's if it wants to see like it comes on top, it doesn't want to see like it goes down. Okay. So fish should be yeah, yes, exactly. Okay. Especially salmon. <laughs> Because salmon uh, are given time to grow until they are mature and then they are fish. So if I'm not going to be fish, I'm going to die of old age. It's going to be very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. Uh, but, so, because I'm showing you how to do this, I'm uh, uh, turning this uh, time in, time out, periodically. Let me just cover it for a while. Okay. And then for our carrots, 
what I would advise you right now for those people who are doing it back home, huh? if you want to blanch carrots or golden carrots or cook them halfway, what the uh, best thing to do uh, is put your carrots in boiling water. And because right now you have boiling water that is dealing with the potatoes, you can mix them up. It's going to have flame up. And then we'll finish our carrots up with some honey, some garlic, some onion, some honey, and some black pepper. Okay. And then we'll play. Okay. And for this dish of ours, it doesn't have sauce if you know it's going to be dry. So what do you think we can do about it? Give me, give me an idea. Give me sauce? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you were going to say that you'll buy uh, the better sauce from the shop. No, we can make ours right over here. We have some uh, tomato, I'm going to use only one tomato. Mm -hmm. uh, bell pepper, capsicum, both of them. And we'll use the pan gravy. I've made very many chefs who have shown me how to do this. Okay. Uh, one chef that I know is called Peter Dog. <laughs> he loves using pan gravy. I worked with him for a couple of years and pan gravy was his best. Even the last time I was cooking with him right over here, he was uh -huh. using pan gravy. Okay. He loves pan gravy with a portion, with a pattern. So you can see it's cooking. Yeah. It smells like spring. It's gonna taste even better. Mm -hmm. So imagine you go to a restaurant and you just have all this. Do you oh. think you can finish it? Um, maybe a piece. If you want piece, I'll finish a piece. If I were to work with some of the lights. Ah, no, 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 no. I love my food. I love your food. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah? So, tell me. Yes. You are living in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You are a teacher. Yep. You must work on the class of wood. Yes. Tell me what happened here. So, how did this affect you? Well, it was, it was a bit scary. Mm -hmm. It is still scary, I'd yeah. say, mm -hmm. from the beginning. But um, I guess, you know, as a teacher, mm -hmm. one thing we as teachers are really good at yeah. flexibility. Ooh, that's yeah. Good. It's um, it's not something that you learn. It's something that comes natural. So it's a calling as well. It is a calling. It's definitely a calling. It keeps me sorry. My hands are working way too much. Um, so we we had to be flexible. We had to use other means to be able to teach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, I'm sure you know this, and most of the viewers know this that mm -hmm. yeah, most of the kids are doing. Not the online learning, mm -hmm. which is something that we were never taught as teachers how to do, you know, teaching online. Well, me? I have a question, I have a question for that. I have a question for online yes. teaching. Okay, ask me, ask me. Sasa, mm -hmm. you know kids, kids can be mischievous. Yes, yes, they can. I'm a more on the other. If you think of them, in your class, mm -hmm. online, or summation. When you want to go to online, I'm not going to go to the I can recommend that actual laptop and then go to the online and go to the mute. I can use the video call. What happened here? The last thing that I was going to be here. So, you know, that's, that's now because you're there at home. That's upon the, upon the parents. Or the guy. Or the guy. Or the guy. To, to handle that. It's, it's not something that I can control. But I can control the getting bored, you know? With the content or the way you're teaching, okay. make it fun, make it enjoyable for them, for their level. So if you're teaching, you know, teenagers, mm -hmm. you have to appeal to them with whatever means possible. Okay, give us an example. So me, I don't relate. You don't relate. I do not relate. <laughs> now give an example. I teach eight year olds. Yes. Okay? So the kind of PowerPoint that I'm using or the presentation I'm using. Yes has to be fun, has to be engaging, has yes. to appeal to them. Yes. Yeah? Um, use a couple of videos here and there. Yes. But your lesson lasts for five minutes. So what happened? Forty five minutes. Yeah, that's right. No, 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 no. So you teach for say twenty five minutes. minutes. Teach for twenty twenty to five minutes. Yes. That's the input. Mm -hmm. And then you let them go do their work afterwards. So you give them practical, that's what you're saying. Not all the time also, because you know practical involve a lot of resources. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you have days where we don't use practical, we don't do practicals. The other days where we have to do practical. Uh -huh. I mean, if you're teaching a science lesson, it can't just be theory, theory, theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have a day where one day you do the theory, the next day you do a practical lesson. 
of course, the theories are kind of uh, you've um, prepared them for the practical. Okay, so you have to prepare them in advance a day before? A day before, two days before, depending on the age you're working with, you know? And I have my specialty is the younger ones, so not the older ones. I'm not really sure how the older ones, uh, you know, how you can really engage them. So yeah, that's how that's how we do. It. What is the toughest challenge you say which come up with you? If you are sure learn our food. In school, face to face. Um my first year teaching. Mm -hmm. I think first year teaching is challenging for very many people. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get easier, of course. But the biggest challenge was um, I did not plan, you know, uh, special education. I didn't go through that. Special mm -hmm. education again. It's different from education. So education we teach every other child, yeah. Yeah. But then the special education we teach children with other needs. Oh, yeah? okay, now I understand. We have other other learning uh, needs. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so that for me was a big challenge because I had a child in my class who required special education. Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was, was my first day teaching, mm -hmm. I was alone in class. Mm -hmm. Of course the best thing is that I work in a really good uh, environment. Yeah, very exactly. amazing an amazing team. Uh -huh. And we have a teacher who, you know, she's a STEM, we call it STEM, special education lead uh -huh. department. And so she came she has came before, I don't think I've ever had a lesson. Yeah, yeah, I came along with her. Uh -huh. So I guess you know, as a teacher, see about where the chaos is the team. I think any other job, maybe as you know, a swimmer. <laughs> other swimming for a coach, right? Like swimming for a swimmer, swimmer, swimmer. Swimmer. But you know, any job you do, any occupation, mm -hmm. you have to work as a team. And for me, I was able to, you know, work through that challenge because I had a really nice team. Oh, okay, nice. I still have a really good team. Lucky, yeah. lucky. So it's still there. <laughs> wow. Yes. Hey, you have a patience. You have a patience. I don't think I'm that patient. Yeah, I think patience comes comes with the job. I think I was also a free patient back then, but it comes with the job. For the quality, for the quality. As long as for the best, patience in account. No, 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 no. Not all the time. <laughs> so for those who are watching back home and for those who want to cook this back home and they don't have a pan like this, you can use your oven. Oh, okay. You just finish it up in the oven, you seal it, give it a nice coat, and open it up for oven for about 7 to 12 minutes. When you say seal, what do you mean by seal? Sealing mm. is very simple. Mm. Sealing is putting it on the pan like you've done right now okay. and giving it this nice coat on top. Okay. As you can see. Brown. Yeah, exactly. Alright. And then you seal it. That's called sealing. So when you put it in the oven, the juices don't get to run out. You just put it inside. Okay. So, so, so you have so, a nice juicy. Yeah, thank you. And I'm going to add in some moisture mm. and then cover it up to give a conventional current type of cooking process. Conventional current. Yeah, I hope I'm not speaking Greek. Conventional. That sounds more like geography, but yeah. I will explain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> conventional is when uh, the heat is uh, circling around. Uh, so okay. inside the pan, it's going to be going on top and the bottom. Okay. So it's going to okay. make the cooking process a little bit faster. Okay. So let's check our potatoes how they are. Mm -hmm. This is how I check my potatoes. This is always how I check my potatoes. In a free break, don't go. You should press that shield. They're almost there, as you can see. They're almost there. Give it a few more minutes, they're going to be ready. They are going to be ready. Okay. In your societal, I'm going to create a sauce. Uh, I'm going to create a sauce of my own. Mm -hmm. Out of the blues. We will put the carrots inside to cook together with the potatoes. Okay. And then we will fish them out later on. What people do most of the time, if they want to make it easy, we just take a sieve. A very nice thick sieve. Put them inside. So when you're fishing them out, it's not going to be a challenge. Okay. And then I come and pour this? Yeah. There you go. Alright. That's good. That's my cup of You save water, you save energy, mm -hmm. and you save the cooking time for your potatoes. Here's my cup of water. That's what you can do. Yes. This is my cup I can come and eat with Why not? If you don't, if you don't, not for being a teacher, what else do you do? Ah, that's a good question now. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, mm -hmm. I had, I think all kids go through this. Nakuwa na kitari, nika change, nakuwa nurse, nika change. Hey, when I cook the family, when I cook the family, then nika pick up my hand, nika wanna eat what you see, baby. 
because I have a massive fear of blood. So, I always bought a butcher. I always bought a butcher. I see what you mean for a butcher. We are better than that, but that's a fact. Go teach university, teach kids, teach nursery school. I just want to teach. For me, for me, it's not about the level in terms of uh, in terms of position. Okay. I know it pays well, you see that I can tell the position, but mm -hmm. I just want to teach. Okay. That's all I want to do. So if I can teach baby class, I it. teach at university, I teach you do it. I'll do it. do it. Yeah. For me, the limit doesn't really apply. Okay. Yeah. So so. Yes. So let's check our meat. It's nice and it's not overcooked. Mm -hmm. It's a part of it's Thank you very much. And our our potatoes are ready. As you can yes. see, they are ready. So mm -hmm. what we'll do, we'll strain. The, the water. I always have a cup of them. We strain the liquid, but not all of it. Uh, I'm gonna mash over there just like that. Seasoning uh, it up and then try my jam again. I'm gonna try to make a more. I'm gonna make a more. I'm gonna make a more. And I guess this is uh, if you mash it without your. Uh, uh, for me, for my show, it's a healthy show, and yeah. I'm trying to show yeah. whether to cook healthy. So I'm, I'm going to avoid lactose on this. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what that's the dog, I think. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to avoid lactose on this, and I'm going to put in some water. Okay. But the water, because it was boiling with it, it's dash. Okay. It's dash, mm -hmm. and it's going to go in very, very well. Okay. So that's with this. Go, go. You have to give in some water. Okay. So that you are mashing it, it becomes a little dry. Mm -hmm. It's going to dry. I'm gonna leave you to do the mashing. Alright. If that's okay with you. That's fine. Can I just pour? Yeah, yeah, but it's worth so let me help you with that. So when you go back home, what's the first meal you're gonna make back home? After this? A healthy meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want, you can redo this and try it. Mm -hmm. You can continue with the mashing. Mash. Take your time, make sure it's mashed and it's Fully, fully smooth. And we love mash for the house. Oh, okay. so very nice, very nice. Uh, we can give you another recipe for this. Mm -hmm. You can saute some garlic. Mm -hmm. you just throw them in the pan. Mm -hmm. And when they're golden brown, you throw them inside. It gives a very, very good flavor. Yeah. Very, very good flavor. I call it garlic mashed potato. So if you like mashed potato. Oh, garlic mashed potato. Yes. Okay. They blend very, very well. What's, your, what's the cooking point of the meat do you like? What cooking point? Medium rare, rare, so done. I like it medium rare, yes. but only if it's been done in the house. But what's your look? Well done. Well done. Yes, just to do the same side. That's yeah. all. Yeah, I'm going to say it's thicker, medium. Okay. It's on the medium level. Okay. Yeah. Looks nice. You mash it and taste it. Mash it and taste it. Because now you're almost uh, getting to that point of finishing everything up. Okay. I'll switch on one of my, on my stoves again mm -hmm. and prepare for the, the one and only the carrots. We call them bitchy carrots. Say that again? Bitchy carrots. B I C I C H B I C H Y. Oh. It's an it's more of Italian if I'm not wrong. Oh. Italian come French. Oh. Well, when I pick up during the peanuts, this is a classical cuisine. Come here, man. You can come close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People prefer putting butter. Yeah. Depends on what you like. You can own the dish and customize it as much as you want to. Yeah. Uh, for us over here, what we do, we we'll go healthy. Okay. But when we're making back home, so, uh, own the dish, okay. make it as tasty as possible. Mm -hmm. You can throw in some herbs if you want. Okay. That's if you want. You can throw in the garlic as I was saying, you can throw in the onion as I was saying. Okay. You can put it in butter and water, but for me, I advocate for if you want to really use oil, mm -hmm. use some olive oil. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to put some olive oil, and okay. that's going to be it. Mashi, mashi. Yeah. Go all around. I'm gonna give you my spatula. Yeah. But you can go all around. Make sure you get everything from the sides. Okay. I'm happy. Yeah. Give that to your wife. Then we'll be using a piping bag to pipe everything down. 
Why are we fighting? Uh, to give it a nice good look to it. Oh, it's all about the aesthetics. Beauty, yeah, no, say it's okay. all about beauty. Okay. Not so much, as you can see. That's for our sauce. Not for our sauce. Our sauce is going to come from the pan. The pan ready. Oh. That's what Chef Peter likes. You know, yeah, there is it, there is it, there is it. And then I'm gonna throw in the I'm going to throw in the carrots, the beach carrots. Mm -hmm. Some salt and pepper as I always do. It's good. It's good? Yes. Just uh, put it on the side and come up with it out. Then it, let me put in some honey. And here goes the honey. Oh. Not so much, but you should feel the sweetness yes. as you're making it. And that's how good it was. Very, very fast to make the carrots, yeah. Very good, very easy, very nice. Mm -hmm. And today we make it very tasty. So where are we going to put it? Uh, we put it on the side. Mm -hmm. And I do this. I've always wanted to know how to do that, but I think all the time I try to do it, everything. Yeah, we start from somewhere. Even okay. me, I was taught. And the best way of doing this, uh, uh, the best way of doing this is using uh, rice. Okay. Just go to the kitchen, get your pan like this and get rice. Mm -hmm. Then put in the rice, tilt the pan, mm -hmm. and then start throwing them around. It's a skill like any other. Okay. It takes time to learn, but when you when you learn it, it's gonna be it's going to be very, very amazing. Okay. This is almost done. This Are we is going well done. done or are we going We're going medium. Okay. Anytime you're cooking mix, give it time to rest mm -hmm. because without a resting time, the juices tend to be all over. Rest and time cooks the meat a little bit further. So if you want medium, you cook it to medium rare and then give it time to rest, the juices are gonna go around. Because inside the cooking process keeps on going on, keeps on going on, keeps on going on. We're almost done. Now it's our pan gravy. Mm -hmm. And for our pan gravy, I have a very nice pan over here. I can change sides, like right now, this way. So that's what I'm gonna use for my pan gravy. Mm -hmm. As you can see. Let me just increase the heat for a while. The little fat is in, that is inside is not going to be enough. So we'll add up some oil and then we'll throw in the onions. We we'll take off the meats. Keep it out. 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 It's a whole lot of meat, yeah? It's like half a kilo. Wow! But the, but the weight is coming from the bone. Mm. Yeah. The weight is coming from the bone. When you see me doing this, I'm, I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. So right now what we'll do, what we'll do, we'll look for our plates that we'll use for, for the plating. I have plates there at the back, you can choose them. Okay. You can use the white ones or the black ones. I prefer the black ones because the mashed potato is white, a little bit brighter. So it's gonna stand out in the in that place. Yeah. Or we can use one of each other. One of the white and one of the black one. That's oh, fine. Okay. okay. And then you wanna fight this? Pardon? Do you want to fight this? I will fight this when the meat is ready. Okay. Uh here's my baby bird. You can fit it all inside. Okay. Have you tested it yet? No, it's not. Before it goes to the table, it's not. There you go. What's missing? What can we add? And let's be very keen on, uh, on spices. And let's be keen on spices. I think mean, it's good because you really, you really have to use spices on it. Oh, I don't use spices. Okay. I have Pass. flavors. I have flavors. Pass. I don't use spices. Pass. Point of correction. Carbs. No, what is the difference then? 
Uh, spices are processed okay. and have the natural flavors. Yeah. Just get them from the farm and put them in the dish yeah. they blend in. Good nice and easy. Yeah. As you can see, our meat is resting very nicely and it's still cooking. So you have to give it time to rest before you serve it. Okay. What other question would you like to ask me as a chef? And... I'm going to ask you the same question you asked me. Yes. If you were not a chef, what yeah. would you do? I love driving. Oh, cars. Yes. Cars are my life. Go to place when my day is really really bad. Yeah. So what I do, what I would love to do if I wasn't a chef, mm. uh, I would love to be a drift racer. Or you just get into a car and drive it sideways. You cannot drive it straight all day long. <laughs> drive it sideways and see what people will do and say about it. Mm. That, is, that is very interesting. Now in the kitchen. Yeah. In the kitchen, what is a good day for a chef? Like, what would you say? I've had a good day. You know? Those hardly come by. Really? When everything clocks up and everything goes according to plan. Really? That hardly happens. That hardly happens. Hardly, and I'm telling you with a couple of days. Hardly happens. Because when you wake up in the morning with a chef, and let's say you're an executive chef, let's say you're not a comedian or anything else, you're an executive chef and you come to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. Your day is going to end at around 9 p.m. Yeah. You started at around 7 or 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Because time flies so fast. And if you're in a busy establishment, mm -hmm. things go very fast and they're very busy. That you don't notice when time is going. And by the end of the day, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I had plans that I was supposed to do A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. But because of work and the workload, it was a lot. And then people always end up missing you. And you know, when you're working with people, not everybody delivers. True. Because you plan A with A and B with B, but everybody has their own point of view mm -hmm. and everybody has their own commitments mm -hmm. and priorities. And unfortunately, not everybody you're not everybody's priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can place it there. I can give you another plate for that. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't get cold. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get rid of this because we're done enough. So you see, mm -hmm. in the life of a chef, there's no good day. We have some good days in, in the kitchen. kitchen. Uh, as long as you do not fight with your boss or your clients went home happy. Yeah. Uh, you can count that a good day. But that hardly happens because as I've worked in restaurants before, I know we get clients who come there and the expectations are this high and their needs are this high. You can get a, a client who wants to have pancakes and he's dairy free. You cannot take dairy items, you cannot take wheat items, and he wants whipped cream. And you, you are going to get whipped cream at that time and you want pancake mm -hmm. like the same pancake you're serving a person who can take which items are they want the same consistency the same taste and everything else and they cannot have day items they cannot have wheat and they cannot have natural sugar uh, artificial sugar they can only have natural sugar mm -hmm. and you really 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 have to give you this anyway uh for me right now my sauce is almost ready if it's not ready i want to finish this right now it's gonna be a nice, nice malaise sauce. Mm -hmm. I want to speed up the process. I'm just going to throw in just a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'll give you a chance to taste and tell me what's missing so that you can serve it. For those who are using honey bar home, you can use honey when you're making anything with tomatoes because tomatoes have a little bit of acidity. Mm -hmm. And once you put in some honey, uh, honey tends to uh, neutralize the acidity in the tomatoes and gives just the enough thickness we need, like right now. That amount of honey is gonna be enough to take care of the acidity of the tomatoes that I put. And it's gonna play around with the flavor as well. That's enough. Nice. So I hope when you go home you will do this. And you'll tell guys back home, hey, this is how this is done and A, B, C, D. Let it. Mm -hmm. Just let it go out. Let it just um, 
just the honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The tomatoes yeah. and the peppers. Okay. Sweet. So it's serving time. The best time of the day. Yeah. Let's clear up our table and go to serving. Should I remove this? Ah, please do. Please do. Almost there. For viewers, I will start with my protein. So I'll do one and you'll do one. I'll do one and you'll do one. There's a whole no food. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, almost a whole kilo. Eh? And then my mashed potato. I want to make sure everybody sees this. Make sure everybody sees this. Or oh, should start with your plate. Let me start with your plate and then I throw in the. Design, yeah. It's all about aesthetics, you know. There you go. Ooh. It goes that way, and then you throw in the thyme or the rosemary. One of your favorite. Mm -hmm. you just put them on top, from side to side. You give me apple, and then sprinkle to you, kido kido go, and then the carrots will come on the side. Okay. Where, where are my carrots? Right over here. Mm -hmm. Not so much, unless the guest wants a little bit more carrots. Put them on the side like this. Guys, don't mind I'm using my hands to clean. I made sure of that before I started the show and during the show. Not so much. There you go. And then our meat. <clears throat> And then the sauce that goes on top. That is beautiful. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Make sure the food has a lot of color and a lot of taste and flavor. Mm -hmm. And the tomatoes are well stewed. There you go. Did you serve it? That is beautiful. There you go. That is really beautiful. Taste and flavor, madam. So right now, this is your main course and appetizer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a plate here because I haven't seen yours yet. Okay. You can try it, you can try it. Let's try, let's try this. Can you use this? Let me give you this. Mm -hmm. This is the time that you're using. Okay. I'm not very good at design though. It's okay. You can hold the plate, you can do this. Instead of doing that, you can come and make Nice big ones. And then you can make another one. Yeah, you can make yeah, another one. Yeah. Exactly. Just make one more and then or two more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. So <laughs> okay. So he's laughing because what did I just do there? Enough. enough. That's enough. And then we put in the. <laughs> no, that's in hilarious. The, we put in the thyme or rosemary. Some other people even put mint. So you can throw this in. So put in the carrots. Yeah, exactly. As I said, you can own the dish. So what you can do is you can put the carrots here. Can you use yeah, please. Yes. There. Too much. Yeah. Good. Uh -huh. And then a piece of meat. Yeah, you should call it the no-fold meat. No-fold meat. Just make even though it mm -hmm. catch the eye. And then sprinkle the sauce over here and we call it our main course. On top of it? Or yes, on, on top, on the side, on the side. Oh. Just on the dish. Like that? Yes. So you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah? And we're done. It was that easy. So guys, this is our main course. Uh, some some guys call it tomahawk, some other guys call it uh, ribeye bone in, whichever. As long as it has taste and flavor, that's all that matters. And faith and me show you how to make it. I hope you will make it back home. And remember to join us for the third course. That's the Swiss roll. Swiss roll. Chocolate Swiss roll mm -hmm. with whipped cream. Whipped cream and some strawberries. It's our sour. Thank you for joining us. See you in a few minutes. Au revoir.